Hello students, welcome to your channel Sepish English Classes. I hope you all are good. And in today's video lecture, I have picked up this book Reverie, which is from ISC board for the students of 11th as well as 12th standard. And the poem that I have taken up today is the sixth poem from this book that is John Brown, which has been written by Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan is an American songwriter who had written this poem in October 1962. This poem is actually a song which has been written in the form of a ballad. And ballad is such a poem that narrates a story. So this poem is actually a story which revolves around the two characters of John Brown and his mother. So Bob Dylan, let me tell you about, about Bob Dylan that he was also awarded Nobel Prize in 2016 in the field of literature for creating new poetic devices in American songs. So he generally writes songs and this is also a song and it is in the form of a ballad as I just told you. So this poem is based on anti-war theme. And as soon as we discuss that this poem is based on anti-war theme, it reminds us of Wilfred Owen, who is an English writer or poet, you can say, and has written a number of British poems. And uh, that all are you know, generally, you know, most of the poems that he has written are talking about World War I and they are based on anti-war themes. It is because Wilfred Owen himself had served as a soldier in World War I and besides being a soldier, he was also a poet. So as a soldier, whatever he had witnessed on the battlefield in the World War I, that all had been penned down by him genuinely as a poet in his poetry. And uh, if we talk about the war poems that have been written in literature, then there are two types of war poems. One of them actually glorify the war by uh, promoting war. Glorifying is like promoting war on the various grounds such as bravery, patriotism, manhood, and it used to be considered as heroic deed. However, there are other poems that are completely different from those war poems and uh, on the contrary to them, these uh, uh, other war poems are actually based on anti-war themes. And uh, I ask you to uh, mention the name of Wilfred Owen for sure in your answer that you write, which is related to this poem. Whatever question is asked in your examination, if it is related to this particular poem, uh, then you must uh, write your answer while mentioning the name of Wilfred Owen because he is somebody who had uh, uh, written a, a lot of poems uh, that uh, were based on anti-war themes. So this poem is also one such poem which is based on anti-war theme. So while writing about this poem, obviously it is very important for you to write that this poem is based on anti-war theme. So when you're writing your answer, whatever may be the question, but when you're writing your answer, you will surely talk about the theme of the poem. While discussing the theme of the poem, when you are expressing that this poem is based on anti-war theme, at the same time, I think you should also talk about Wilfred Owen by saying that this theme of this poem reminds you of that poet who is known as a war poet just because after witnessing and after experiencing that uh, uh, battlefield as a soldier in the world war one wilfred had written a large number of poems that were all related to war and that were all based on anti-war themes so you can talk about him by mentioning him just a little bit that it reminds you of this poet who is known as a war poet and who has written a number of poems based on anti-war themes. And this is one such poem which is based on anti-war theme and that's why you discussed Wilfred as well just a little bit. So <clears throat> the poems that are based on anti-war themes, they are very clearly conveying this idea that war is something which we should try to keep away from, which we, we should never promote because uh, 
War uh, always results into destruction and the destruction takes place at such a huge level that despite you know uh, the victory uh, which is attained by any party you you can never be happy at the end of the war obviously if two parties are at war one of the parties will come out victorious but even the party that come out uh, that comes out victorious will also not be happy as expected at the end of the war just because that victory is accompanied by such a huge destruction and uh, you can say that the destruction or catastrophe or cataclysm is so dominating that it suppresses the happiness of victory you forget about the victory and you only remain in pain for that loss for that destruction that uh, that you undergo so uh, you know in literature uh, so many poets had written so many poems and uh, they were war poems but they had glorified war as i just told you on various grounds patriotism religion maybe maybe uh, heroism maybe bravery manhood and all but uh, uh, here bob dylan has tried to show you that all such people all such poets or people who are living in the society and who are trying to portray this war as a heroic deed is something actually wrong just because they are those people who uh, themselves do not witness uh, or experience the battlefield uh, but they remain you know at their homes they stay at home and simply uh, brag or boast their soldiers who are on the battlefield however who knows that the soldiers who are in the battlefield are actually willing to be there are actually happy are actually feeling courageous and bold and brave there or they must be feeling scared of death it is very much possible it is probable so here bob dylan has tried to show you the two aspects of war and uh, also the two types of perspectives that prevail in the society regarding war like there are some people who glorify war and some people are always against war so uh, very beautifully bob dylan has tried to convey this theme to you through the two characters of john brown and his mother so john brown is the character who is representing all those people in the society uh, who are pacifist pacifist is someone who loves peace and who promotes peace it means uh, john brown being a pacifist means being a person who promotes peace and who loves peace is against war so he is representing all those people in the society who are against war they do not glorify war they are against war they are not in favor of war and uh, they understand the result the destruction of the war however on the contrary to the character of john brown there is another character that is the mother of john brown and she is representing all those people in the society who glorify war who are in favor of war and they have got many reasons various reasons on the grounds of which on the basis of which they glorify war so we will see how those people who glorify war they are actually not aware of the real situation that uh, the soldiers uh, face that the soldiers uh, confront but these people keep glorifying the war by simply staying at their homes in a very comfortable zone and they do not realize what happens as a result of war so this is what the poet has tried to portray here and uh, he has shown that uh, john brown's mother who remains very happy and excited about her son going for the war she had always dreamt of her son to become a soldier and finally he has become a soldier
So it is very clear to us that John Brown had not the desire of becoming a soldier, but he was compelled to become a soldier for the sake of the dream of his mother. In the same way, you know, this is actually giving us this idea that is prevailing in the society as well, that there are soldiers who are working as soldiers, not out of their will or desire or dream, but just because they, they were under some kind of obligation or compulsion. And you can understand their situation. They only know in the battlefield how it feels. They, they may be praying at that time for their life. They may be praying for, for you know, escaping death. But then people who glorify war, are sitting back at their homes in their comfortable zones and appreciating the soldiers and saying that they are brave people they are like heroes and all why so that the soldiers remain motivated and so that uh, the soldiers consider it as a heroic deed however those people who brag about the soldiers and who are not pacifists and who glorify the war and to motivate uh, or promote the war in a way by glorifying it they do not understand the outcomes and the destruction that a war causes and here bob dylan will show you such a situation which will surely bring rather tears in your eyes because here Bob Dylan has tried to show you such a result of the war which is worse than death. See, what maximum can one expect out of any destruction or war or anything? That is death. But here something worse than death is going to take place and then uh, it is such a huge destruction that people will start thinking that death would have been rather better than this. So let us start the poem now. John Brown went off to war to fight on a foreign shore. His mama sure was proud of him. He stood straight and tall in his uniform and all. His mama's face broke out all in a grin. So John Brown was getting ready to go for the war and he was getting ready to go for the war to a foreign place. And uh, obviously when he was getting ready, he was wearing his uniform and he was carrying his uh, weapons and all. So his mother was feeling very proud and very enthusiastic and very happy. She was very excited to see her son getting ready, wearing the uniform, carrying the gun and all, just because she had always dreamt her son to be a soldier. And he stood straight and tall in his uniform. Here in this third line, there is a figure of a speech used, which is called alliteration. And I have told what is alliteration. Alliteration is a figure of a speech in which it happens when in a single line itself there are at least two words or more than two words that have got the same first letter and that first letter is a consonant sound giving letter so here in the third line we see there are two words in the same line that is stood and straight and their first letter is same that is s and s is a consonant letter so this is alliteration so uh, he was a standing very straight and which is showing his strength and his youth and he was looking very handsome in his uniform and when his mother saw him getting ready and you know the way he was standing everything was so perfect was so uh, attractive to look at because of his youthfulness as well that his mother felt very happy and she had got a grin on her face grin is a broad smile which was reflecting her excitement, elation, joy. Oh son, you look so fine. I'm glad you are a son of mine. You make me proud to know you hold a gun. Do what the captain says, lots of medals you will get and we will put them on the wall when you come home. So mother is saying you're looking so handsome and I'm feeling so glad and so proud to, to see that you're my son. And I feel so proud to see that you've got a gun as well. See that the gun is a token of pride you know for for the mother however she is not able to understand that the gun which is a weapon only and this weapon can be equally harmful for her son too obviously that gun is not only meant to harm the opponents of john brown or or the other party 
you can say but this gun is equally harmful for john brown as well it is a weapon it is not a friend to anyone it can harm john brown or the uh, the other party so we have to understand or the people who are glorifying war they need to understand that these weapons and uh, the explosions and the war is always destructive and it is not beneficial to either of the parties that participate in the war so she is not able to understand that fact and she feels very proud of her son carrying the gun and she is also telling this to her son that always you know follow the commands that are given to you by your captain because if you follow the commands uh, that are given to you by your captain then you will turn out to be victorious and then you will be getting a lot of medals and then you will bring those medals to home then we will decorate the walls of the house with those medals this is what she wants so it is very important for us to understand and you should also underline the this line that what is her desire out of this entire process that she wants her son to win the medals as if this is the purpose for which she is sending her son for the war and we will see that her purpose is served as well she achieves what she wanted out of the war but even after achieving she is not happy at the end of the war and this is something which is significant as a message in this poem because the poet wants to convey that whatever may be your purpose with which you go for the war at the end of the war you are never happy and satisfied with the result as that old train pulled out john sma began to shout telling everyone in the neighborhood that's my son that's about to go he is a soldier now you know she made well sure her neighbors understood so you see uh, that she had gone to a uh, see of her son and jo wo jaati hai unko bhejne ke liye unko see off kar deti hai aur jab wo wahan se aati hai jab wo train chalna start ho jaati hai old train because it wants to give you that it was a typical train that was taking him towards that place where he was supposed to uh, face the war so john brown ki jo mother hai wo wapas aati hai apne neighborhood mein apne mohalle mein and there she you know uh, there she starts bragging about her son what is bragging or boasting it means to exaggerate or to appreciate in a very exaggerating manner that is more than required more than necessary ya jo over ho jaye bahut badha chada ke extra tareefe karna that is called bragging or boasting to wo jo hai aakar ke apne bete ko brag karti hai boast karti hai extra tareefe karti hai mera beta to soldier ban gaya hai and she also wants to ensure ki jo neighbors hai wo samjhe is baat ka matlab ki soldier banna kya hota hai so that they may understand that her son is such a brave boy that he has chosen to become a soldier and that he has got a weapon as well and now he is going to face the war and fight against those opponents of the nation however she is not able to understand that her son was not only going to kill but could be killed as well wo sirf maarne nahi ja raha hai wo mar bhi sakta hai he is equally vulnerable or prone in the battlefield he is not only going to kill but someone can kill him too this is something you should understand these are the two aspects of the war and therefore we should just uh, you know drop that perspective we shouldn't ever think in this way that war is something to be promoted for any reason any cause any purpose it is never a justified action because it results into destruction and it is equally harmful for both the parties that involve in the war so she got a letter once in a while and her face broke into a smile as she showed them to the people from next door and she bragged about her son with his uniform and gun and these things you called a good old fashioned war oh good old fashioned war so since her son had uh, left so she used to get letters kuch kuch time pe intermittently matlab 
शॉर्ट इंटरवल्स पे कुछ कुछ दिनों पे उनको लेटर मिल जाता था और जब भी उनको अपने बेटे का लेटर मिलता था शी यूज़ टू फील वेरी हैप्पी अबाउट इट एंड शी वॉज यू नो सो मच अकस्टम्ड टू ब्रैकिंग अबाउट हर सन दैट आज सुन आज शी यूज टू रिसीव द लेटर शी वुड गो टू हर नेबर्स एंड वुड शो दैम द लेटर दैट शी हैड रिसीव फ्रॉम हर सन एंड शी वुड ऑल्सो टेल यू नो कि हाउ हर सन हैड गॉन इन द यूनिफॉर्म विद द गन एंड एवरीथिंग शी वुड कीप ऑन पोस्टिंग अबाउट और एक्सैचुरेटिंग अप्रिशिएटिंग हर सन और सी ये जो यूनिफॉर्म और गन है दीज टू थिंग्स are actually an indication of a good old fashioned war here there are two figures of a speech oh god good good old fashioned war here you can see repetition of these uh, of this phrase or group of words repetition is also a figure of a speech which is uh, used to emphasize upon some idea something or you can say to accentuate something so here so as to accentuate or emphasize upon this that uh, uniform and gun used to be symbolic for a proper war mm -hmm. and therefore here the, these uh, group of words have been repeated uh, has been repeated and also we see there is an exclamatory mark at the end of the slide which is showing you that it is also a figure of a speech you can say exclamation it is a literary device called exclamation exclamation is used to express a sudden feeling as we know that exclamatory sentences also express sudden feelings then the letters ceased to come for a long time they did not come they ceased to come for about 10 months or more then a letter finally came saying go down and meet the train your son is a coming home from the war so kuch time tak to letters aa rahe the uske baad letters aana band ho gaye ceased matlab stopped aur jab letters aana band ho gaye then it became a cause of concern aur kareeb 10 mahine tak 10 months ya usse bhi zyada it means around a year letters nahi aaye that was uh, obviously painful for the mother उसके बाद फाइनली जब लेटर आया तो उसमें यह लिखा था कि आप जाएं और इस ट्रेन से जा कर के रिसीव कर लें इस ट्रेन से आपका बेटा आ रहा है जाके उसको रिसीव कर लें एंड ही इज कमिंग बैक फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड शी इज माइल्ड एंड वेंट राइट डाउन शी लुक्ड एवरी वे अराउंड बट शी कुड नॉट सी हर सोल्जर सन इन साइड बट एज ऑल द पीपल पास्ट शी सो हर सन एट लास्ट वेन शी डेड शी कुड हार्डली बिलीव हर आइज तो फिर से वो स्माइल किया उन्होंने खुश हो गई वो कि उनका बेटा फाइनली आ रहा है और ही इज़ ऑल वेल एंड ही इज़ अलाइव और फिर जो है वो पहुँच जाती है रेलवे स्टेशन वहाँ पर वो हर तरफ देख रही है अपने बेटे को ढूंढ रही है लेकिन उनको कहीं पर उनका वो सोल्जर सन नहीं दिख रहा है दिस इज़ इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड इन दिस लाइन अगैन देर इज द सेम फिगर ऑफ स्पीच एलिट्रेशन दैट आई हैव टोल्ड यू इन द बिगिनिंग ऑफ द पोए so now whenever you come across this figure of a speech alliteration since i have already told you what it is you should be able to identify it in that statement but as all the people passed she saw her son at last when she did she could hardly believe her eyes or finally unki nazar padi apne bete pe dekho wo apna soldier son dhoond rahi hai wo beta jo soldier ki tarah strong youthful gaya tha wahan se अपने घर से वॉर के लिए लेकिन जो लौटा है वो सोल्जर सन नहीं है इसलिए उनको समझ में नहीं आ रहा था कि कहाँ है उनका बेटा फाइनली उन्होंने जब देखा रिकॉग्नाइज किया वहाँ पर उस भीड़ में तो उन्हें अपनी आंखों पर यकीन नहीं आया कि ये उनका बेटा है ओ हिज फेस वॉज ऑल शॉर्ट अप एंड हिज हैंड वॉज ऑल ब्लोन ऑफ एंड ई वोर अ मेटल प्रेस अराउंड हिज वेस्ट ही विस्पर्ड काइंड ऑफ स्लो in a voice she did not know while she couldn't even recognize his face so see chehra ekdam explode ho chuka tha due to the explosives face was completely shot up hand was blown off that means it was completely exploded again so he had lost his hand his face was all damaged destroyed or even backbone was no more helping him or supporting him to stand straight which is a juxtaposition with the line that we had read in the first stanza of the poem 
he stood straight and tall in his uniform kitna smart lag raha tha wo jab wo tall aur straight khada tha aur abhi use straight khade hone ke liye metal brace ki zarurat hai so it is juxtaposing these two lines are completely opposite and they are conveying the opposite meanings how you know the situation the war you can see has changed the situation of john brown the life of john brown and jab wo bol raha hai apni mother se to is tarah bol raha hai jaise wo bahut loud nahi hai confident nahi hai bahut hi soft si bahut hi slow aur whispering tone mein baat kar raha hai and unki jo mother hai wo pehchan nahi pa rahi hai apne bete ke chehre ko again uh, you will see there is a repetition oh lord not even recognize his face repetition is simply showing that these words are important and they should be emphasized so that it can give you that idea ki how that same mother who was so happy to see her son looking attractive and smart in the uniform was no more able to identify or recognize her son Uh, you know his face was no more identifiable it was so badly damaged so we see that the this particular line has been repeated or these words have been repeated so as to accentuate that see the mother herself was no more able to recognize her son and then exclamation mark is there so as to show that shocking feeling or sense oh tell me my darling son pray tell me what they done how is it you come to be this way he tried his best to talk but his mouth could hardly move and the mother had to turn her face away so she saying my darling son please tell me kyun logo ne tumhare sath kya kiya kaise tumhari ye halat ho gayi aur usne bahut bolne ki koshish kiya apni mother se baat karne ki koshish kiya लेकिन वो बोल ही नहीं पाया उसका माउथ तक जैसे प्रॉपर वर्क नहीं कर रहा है ही इज नॉट एबल टू इवन यू नो टॉक एंड वो जो उसकी सिचुएशन थी इट वॉज सो एट्रॉशियस एंड पेनफुल दैट हिज मदर कुडेंट सी हिम इन दैट पेन एंड शी जस्ट टर्न अवे हर फेस फ्रॉम दैट साइट ऑफ हर सन सो यू सी दैट ही हैड कम बैक ऑल डैमेज एंड दिस डैमेज दिस डिस्ट्रक्शन of his corporeal existence or physical body from top to bottom is worse than death because death would have simply consumed his physical existence but his spirit would have remained alive obviously his spirit remains alive but here we see due to such a pathetic condition and such a such an obnoxious destruction of his body physical body he is no more in his senses as well he has lost his spirit too in the way that he has lost his confidence his mental faculties as well and then his emotional sense just because you must be knowing that whenever a normal person suffers from any kind of a physical um, Access, uh, suffers from some accident or incident that harms the person physically in such a way that the person you know may uh, lose some some part of his body or something like that and as a result uh, if that person becomes handicapped then uh, that person also loses all the confidence and uh, is no more able to you know survive in in that same world where he had also lived a normal life as a normal human being so they are given a lot of counselings and also that they can still have the spirit to live their lives as you may be knowing there are people who are victims of acid attacks and all and how their entire life changes all of a sudden and then they are not able to live their lives they feel like dying since they lose their normal and beautiful uh, uh, you know identity and then they just because of an accident or because of an incident they simply turn from normal to abnormal from completely from a complete uh, person to handicapped and this is what they fail to accept you know instantly and they don't feel like living their lives anymore and then they are given counseling sessions and everything so that they can still uh, live or survive 
so you see that this uh, john brown has also suffered from that uh, pathetic destruction of his entire body and this physical destruction or um, of his body you can say physical destruction itself means the destruction or the damage that has been made to his body this is something which has also uh, you know hurt him mentally as well as emotionally and due to which he is no more in his senses no more confident bold strong and not even able to talk and this is how it is not only his physical loss or the loss or the damage or the destruction of his physical body but also it is a destruction to his spirit since he is no more willing to live his life don't you remember Mao when I went off to war? You thought it was the best thing I could do. I was on the battleground. You were home acting proud. He wasn't there in my shoes. As I told you now that this is the situation it happens in the world. He, he's saying this to his mother. And this conversation uh, which is going on between mother and son. And these words of John Brown to his mother are actually a great message to all the people out there who believe in war or glorify war for any reason. See, he is saying, Mama, जब हम वॉर पे जा रहे थे, आपको लग रहा था कि इससे बेहतर प्रोफेशन, इससे बेहतर काम मेरे लिए और कुछ नहीं हो सकता। I am going to do something the best ever. And हम जब बैटल ग्राउंड पे थे, बैटल फील्ड पे थे, वहाँ पर सामने डेथ को फेस कर रहे थे, उस वक्त आप लोगों के घर जा जा करके ब्रैक कर रही थी, बहुत ज़्यादा show off karayi you were so happy just because you did not know my situation at that time you were thinking that i must be feeling very courageous bold confident and brave there however the fact is completely contrary to your perspective because as a matter of fact a soldier is also a human being and as a human being he also feels scared of death and doesn't want to die and doesn't want to leave his family behind so you see he's saying you wasn't there standing in my shoes and it is an english proverb which means ki aap mere situation mein nahi thi. you were not standing in my shoes means you were not in my situation you were not sailing in that boat and therefore you couldn't ever realize ki kaisa lagta hai actual mein battleground pe acha nahi lagta hai ye nahi lagta hai ki hum mar jaye aur this is how i will get a lot of respect everyone wants to live and it was so scary to, feel, to, to face death at that point of time. And that was something which only I knew. You were simply unaware of that. Oh, and I thought when I was there, God, what am I doing here? I am trying to kill somebody or die trying. But the thing that scared me most was when my enemy came close and I saw that his face looked just like mine. Then he said, Ki हमने ये सोचा कि क्यों है हम यहाँ पर? Why am I here? हम कर क्या रहे हैं यहाँ पर? This is such an important question that was put forth by John Brown while he was conversing with his mother. Just because this question is raising question to all those people who think that the soldiers are very happy in the battleground and that they happily go to the battleground, it is not so. They are not willing to become soldiers and they have chosen that alternative probably under some obligation or com compulsion due to which it doesn't ever give them that happiness or that satisfaction when they are in the battleground and killing people for no genuine reason. And he's saying, why are we killing him? Or why are we killing him? लेकिन उससे भी ज्यादा जो चीज हमें डरा रही थी वो ये थी कि जब मेरा दुश्मन मेरे करीब आया एंड आई सॉ कि उसका चेहरा तो बिल्कुल मेरी तरह था दैट मींस ही वाज लाइक अ ब्रदर टू मी सो दिस थीम ऑफ ब्रदरहुड एंड फ्रैटर्निटी इज आल्सो हियर इन दिस पोएम थ्रू दिस स्टैंजा वी कम टू नो बट उसका चेहरा मेरी तरह था इसका मतलब क्या है इसका मतलब ये है he his he had also got the traits of a human being or the characteristics or the features of a human being which means he was sharing the same features with me as a human being and in that way he was also a creation of the same God which means he was a brother to me like siblings 
look like each other when they belong to the same parents so we were like brother to each other and we actually did not have a genuine reason or a solid reason to kill each other i did not know why i was gonna kill him i did not want to kill him either but then why was i killing him this is what he's raising as a question so again here you need to understand that they there are two figures of a speech as i told you repetition is there and exclamation is there and then see uh, John Brown is telling you that he had got lost in the string of thoughts now कि क्यों वो उसको मार रहा है जबकि उसकी कोई दुश्मनी भी नहीं है उसके साथ तो क्या बैटल फील्ड पर किसी के पास इतना वक्त होता है कि वो किसी सोच में लॉस्ट हो जाए और अगर ऐसा हो गया इन केस लाइक इट हैपन विद जॉन ब्राउन तब फिर तो हिज डिस्ट्रक्शन वॉज लाइक श्योर टू हैपन and i couldn't help but think through the thunder rolling and sting that i was just a puppet in a play and through the roar and smoke this string is finally broke and a cannon ball blew my eyes away aur keh rahe hain ki hum hum na chahte hue us soch mein involved the hum khud ko rok hi nahi pa rahe the us soch se phir achanak se thunder aur thunder rolling thunder rolling is like wahan par jab explosions start hue all of a sudden तो वो एक्सप्लोजन्स और एक्सप्लोजन्स की जो बैड स्मेल थी उसको स्टिंक कहा जा रहा है ये सब इतना ज़्यादा वहाँ पर होने लगी ऑल ऑफ अ सडन जस्ट बिकॉज सम एक्सप्लोजिवस वर यूज और तब जब हम इस थॉट में लॉस्ट थे कि हम तो बस एक पपेट की तरह इस प्ले में पार्टिसिपेट किए हुए हैं एंड इन दिस लाइन ऑल्सो इट इज़ एलिट्रेशन बिकॉज पपेट एंड प्ले पी पी इज रिपीटिंग एंड इट इज़ अ कॉन्सनेंट लेटर सो ही इज सेंग कि जब हमने ये रियलाइज़ किया कि हम तो यहाँ पर बस पपेट हैं आई एम नॉट किलिंग दिस पर्सन जस्ट बिकॉज आई वॉन्ट टू किल हेम और आई डो नॉट लाइक हिम और आई हैव एनी पर्सनल हेट्रेड और प्रॉब्लम टूवर्ड्स हेम बट जस्ट बिकॉज आई एम बींग कमांडेड टू किल हेम आई एम गोन किल हेम इट मीन्स आई एम लाइक अ पपेट हियर इन द प्ले एंड आई एम सपोज टू डू वट आई एम यू नो इंस्ट्रक्टेड टू डू सो वाइल आई वॉज इन द रियलाइजेशन ऑफ दोज थाट्स कुछ एक्सप्लोजन हुआ और उस एक्सप्लोजन ने अचानक से मेरी थॉट्स की स्ट्रिंग को जो एक वीविंग थी थॉट्स की वो ब्रैक हो गई और कैन एन बॉल जो तोप से निकली थी वो बॉल सडनली आकर के मेरी आंखों में लगी एंड द आईज गॉट डैमेज एंड एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ द डैमेज टू द आईज ऑब्वियसली ही वाज नो मोर एबल टू हिट द पीपल देयर एंड देन ही वाज हिट सो बैडली एज एज अ रिजल्ट As he turned away to walk, his mom was still in shock. अब वो जब जा रहा है जाने के लिए पलटा लेकिन उसकी मदर अभी भी शॉक में है उनको यकीन नहीं आ रहा कि ये सब क्या हो गया शी हैडेंट एक्सपेक्टेड यू नो ऑल दिस वॉट शी वॉज एक्सपेक्टिंग शी वॉज एक्सपेक्टिंग हर सन टू कम बैक विद अ लॉट ऑफ मेडल्स एंड दैट टू कम्प्लीटली ऑल राइट शी शुड हैव थाट दैट ही कुड be harmed as well because both the parties in the battle ground are equally prone or vulnerable to dangers at seeing the metal brace that helped him start unko yakeen nahi aa raha mera wo beta jo tall straight khada hota tha tall lagta tha handsome lagta tha aaj usko seedhe khade hone ke liye bhi metal brace lagana pad raha hai but as he turned to go he called his mother close lekin jab wo jaane laga तो जाने से पहले उसने अपनी मदर को और पास बुलाया एंड ही ड्रॉप्ड इस मेडल्स डाउन इन टू हर हैंड और उसने मेडल्स को अपनी मदर के हाथों में रख दिया विच इज अ फिगर ऑफ अ स्पीच कॉल्ड आयरनी बिकॉज दिस इज आयरनी आयरनी इज टॉन्ट एंड इट इज अ टॉन्ट हियर इट इज अरकाजम इट इज आयरनी बिकॉज दिस इज वॉट हिज मदर ऑलवेज वॉन्टेड this is what she had asked him to do she had asked him to achieve she had told him to remain obedient to the captain so that you are able to win the medals and with those medals we will decorate the walls of our house this was the purpose of the mother and the purpose has been served has been achieved as well the goal has been achieved but is the mother happy what is expected you know she should have been happy she should have been happy she should be happy just because 
her goal has been achieved her son has won the medals but still despite the goal being achieved despite the purpose being served she is not happy at the end of the war this is what the poet wants to convey and this is ironical that she is not happy despite the achievement and this is something you know that happens in all the wars every time that despite the party uh, the the victorious party you can say obviously two parties are participating then one of them will surely win so even the party that wins that turns out to be victorious that party also doesn't feel happy at the end of the war just because by that time the party has lost would have lost so many soldiers so many people so many things maybe some physical loss as well or some you know body loss some part of the body uh, might have been damaged in their cases too and this is how even when they win that victory seems to be worthless so even if the purpose is served you know in the war the war's end is always so catastrophic or destructive that it never gives you happiness and the purpose itself seems to have become meaningless and worthless by the end of the war and therefore this activity of war can never be justified on any ground for any cause for any purpose and therefore you should try to be a pacifist that means somebody who loves peace and tries to promote peace so i hope you understood this poem so you should be able to write a good answer in your examination and besides that you should also try to be a pacifist and try to promote and motivate peace around yourself in your surrounding uh, as a good human being so i think this uh, poem should be read by you not only for the sake of your syllabus but also for a lesson of life so i hope you have understood thank you so much for watching and uh, subscribe to the channel for further notifications thank you